Well, welcome back, everyone. And as always, our first guest this evening is John Longley, the athletic director here at the high school. John, thanks for coming in. As usual, it's kind of great to be back here at Sports Extra with you. Yeah, thanks, yeah. Mark. Uh, <laughs> glad to be here. Happy Thanksgiving to you. And, and to you as well. well. And to you as well. Thanks. I mean, wow, what a year it's been <laughs> for, for you guys, to say the least. Um, before we kind of get into the fall and winter seasons, I, I thought this might be a great opportunity for you to kind of tell us a little bit about all of that has been going on between the MIAA and we know about the EEA, but you know, for, for the folks at home, uh, you know, who, we get to the final product where the, the fall sports was played, but a lot had to go in just to get us to the fall season. Yeah, there's, so the, so the process was really developed, you know, I think over the summer and into August as, as uh, you, you know, things started to progress and, you know, agencies started to put out guidelines and then the processes were developed and every, obviously everything is new. So yeah. that's, that, that's kind of the term of the year, right? Things evolve, things are different. Everything is new to everybody. I say to, to people, uh, this is like being a first year AD all over <laughs> yeah. again because it's like every day you're hit with something new that you're not sure of. Right. So, um, you know, we have completed the fall season, which I would I say was 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 a success. Uh, there were a lot of, you know, a lot of work that went into yeah. it from a lot of different groups, and you know, really, you know, the the test is people communicating and working together, honestly, and that that's always the case. But even more this year, you know, uh, between the MIA level, the state level. Uh, Nord High School, myself, the coaches, the community, the kids, the parents, the league. I mean, it, it's really essential that everyone works together and, and, and we have a trust and with a common goal of getting the kids out there participating safely. Yeah. And that's, it's not necessarily the same as it was last year or hopefully next year. You know, our, our predominant and, and, and main goal this year is allowing for opportunities for kids to participate uh, safely, you know, so that we can, you know, try to prevent the spread and keep everyone yeah. in our community safe. Yeah, yeah. You, you know, and again, you, you talk about multiple layers here. Um, most folks know the, you know, the, the MIAA in terms of the governing body, you know, for high school sports. Um, but, but there are a number of different bodies especially this year, obviously, yeah. that the MIAA had to work with, we, we talk about the, the Massachusetts government and, and the environmental agency. Yeah. They're out there setting up you know, programs to ensure that obviously these, all our, our youth athletes are safe. Right. Talk to us a little bit about how the MIAA works in conjunction with the EEA here in Massachusetts. Yeah, so this, I mean, this really just, th this was a kind of a this year type of a thing. So a lot of the, the, the way that it's kind of worked out for the fall and, and then has kind of blended into the, for the winter here is the EEA puts out guidelines for youth sports and high school sports. Right. And then uh, they, they actually categorize them high risk, moderate risk, and low risk. And some actually have, over the course, I think they first put their guidelines out like in June, potentially. And then some sports have actually, you know, moved from, from one level to the other. Yeah. Like soccer originally was on, was, it was in the high category. And then when they, you know, came out with an updated list later in the summer, they, they moved them to moderate. So basically, the format has been and evolved to be the EEA puts out their guidelines. And then the MIAA... Um, each sport has has a sport committee right. and the sport committee is made up of roughly about 20 people different stakeholders around the state and, and different each area of the state is actually represented as well and the people that represent uh, that are represented on those committees are athletic directors assistant principals principals superintendents coaches officials mm -hmm. an MIA representative and so you have this, you know, kind of broad base group of people that, that are members of these individual sport committees. So the sport committees, and, and the time was kind of an essence because the EEA has been waiting till pretty much the last minute to put out their guidelines because they want the most sure. information yeah, that they sense. can have. Yeah. So then the sport committees have like less than a week or even a couple of days to review those guidelines and create modifications so that the sport can actually go. So that's what's happened. EEA goes, puts out the guidelines, sport committees meet. Now, 
everyone knows everyone's meeting online. There's no, yeah. you know, all those, so everything that we're all doing is completely new. Uh, and then what, then in turn what happens is the MIAA created a COVID task force that's kind of overseeing everything. Yeah. And that's, that involves a similar group of stakeholders around the state, about 20 people. So the sport committees make their modifications. They actually present to the MIA Sports Medicine Committee. So the Sports Medicine Committee then gives feedback or approves those recommendations. And then the Sports Medicine Committee presents those modifications to the COVID Task Force. And then the COVID Task Force presents to the final group, which is the MIA Board of Directors for approval. Yeah. So that's all happened. And then locally what happens is, you know, we have our individual schools, you know, some schools based on what's happening in our gym. Some people have classrooms in their mm -hmm. gyms. Yeah. Some people don't have pools available to them right now, like for, uh, for swim, indoor track, the Reggie Lewis Center is not open. So there's, in the winter, you come across scenarios where you're reliant on outside facilities. Right. And with that, you know, you lose control. And, you know, and so that's why, for example, you may not see, you know, the similar amount of sports that you might see typically in the winter, this winter. Um, so then, you know, at your local level, you know, your athletic director, your building principal meet, superintendent, school committee, and then you also have the league because yeah. this year, everyone around the state uh, even though we always do things together as a league and we always meet, I mean, we meet, we meet twice a month on a regular yeah. year. Uh, but this year, since the, the games have been confined to only league play, we've developed kind of league protocols and things like that. And, and the league has actually, um, you know, put together kind of more guidelines than you typically might sure. have, you, you know. So that's really how it's yeah. worked. It's an, yeah. it, 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 you know, it, it's funny, you, a lot of us just see the end product. Right. You know, unfortunately this fall, we were able to see the end product of soccer, field hockey, golf, and, right. and cross country. Right. Um, it, just listening to that, and again, that's just probably just a quick little thumbnail of what goes on. The, the work that has gone on, you know, behind the scenes to get these young men and women back out on the, on the fields and the courts this year has been, you know, unbelievable. Um, what I find interesting, though, is, you know, again, for, for the MIAA, for example, they've just come out with their, their recommendations for the winter season. Right. That still, as you mentioned, that still has to kind of get that final blessing, as it were, from the TVL. Uh, where does that stand in terms of adopting what has been proposed for our winter athletes this year? Yeah, so we're at, um, so a week ago, Friday, was the final approval, the Friday before Thanksgiving from the MI Board of Directors. Right. And then the TVL principals actually met, you know, we're also, you know, we're up, we were up against the holiday last week. So the TVL principals uh, met last Tuesday, and they're actually meeting again today. Yep. So to kind of finalize their recommendations, you know, for the season. Um, but also locally, you know, um, the way that it stands currently, we don't need a formal vote or approval from our school committee, but mm -hmm. what we've done is, you know, we want their support and for them to understand what's happening. Sure. And, and so we will, you know, then um, kind of communicate the plan that the TVLs put together with, with the, the, the superintendent and the school committee and, right. and then kind of move forward. We have opened, you know, we're nearing the end, you know, we're close. Yeah. Uh, right now we do have a start date for winter sports, which is Monday, December 14th. Yep. Um, registration uh, has been open. And so that's open for the sports that we will be offering right now during the winter are boys and girls basketball, boys and girls ice hockey, co-ed swim, and gymnastics. Yep. So that registration is open. Uh, it's it's a quick turnaround. It's due next Wednesday, so we can process that. But yep. everyone needs to get on, you know, Aspen Parent Portal and sign up. And um, and so we'll be getting, you know, we've been having coaching meetings. We're going to have a sports information day mm -hmm. for the kids next Wednesday. Uh, we're putting that together now so that. Um, we can answer any questions the kids have. We'll be setting up, you know, Google Classrooms right. with the teachers for that, uh, for, with the coaches. So um, the schedule has put out. The, the games will begin after 
uh, the new year, okay. and it will fo you know follow a similar format to the fall. We'll, we'll try to play the same school in the same week. Yep. You know, do the home and home like we did in the fall. It's going to be. Um, you know, more traditional in the sense that hockey is, we're not going to play all the games on the weekends like we did in the fall. Okay. Basketball will be, you know, on your traditional Tuesday, Friday, and hockey will be on your traditional Wednesday, Saturday. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, we'll play, you know, right up until February vacation. So, so actually, once we get back after the you know the new year yeah. it's going to be pretty similar right. to what we've seen in the past the two days a week yep. you know right up until february vacation the miaa did vote you know to not there's not going to be any tournaments yeah. for the winter so the season will just end um and so that's but i think once we get back from after the first of the year it'll be you know, kind of uh, typical to what we would yep. be doing, you know. Business uh, as normal as, as normal can be. Yeah, unfortunately, yeah, we're yeah. not going to be able to do indoor track. Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be moved to the fall, too, uh, because the Reggie Lewis Center is not open and there's just not a viable facility or way to host meets right sure. now yep. uh, based on the guidelines. And uh, cheerleading, again, has not received approval from the EEA. Uh, neither has wrestling right now. Um, those committees have recommended moving uh, wrestling and cheerleading to the spring. Uh, so we'll look to see, you know, if we can get more guidelines and, and see if we can get those sports played right. you know, at that time. Football did receive approval I at, at this last thing. So the, the plan is to still go with football. That's great news. Yeah. And uh, those, they haven't created their modifications yet, though. Yeah. So... But they're at least again, it's in a positive direction for for, for all these these kids. And, and and I know a number of times um, when we were th this fall, just for example, and, and yeah. we've got a lot of our teams coming in, so we'll we'll catch up on their seasons. But you know, being able to to cover them, and, and I saw you a number of times up there at the field, obviously this this past fall. I, I think if you were to ask any athlete, coach, or parent, you know, the choice of playing with modifications or not playing at all, I, I got to suspect every athlete and parent and coach and athletic director is going to want to let, let's get them back out there playing um so it was fantastic the work that you and your committee and the folks here at the high school did to get this all together for this fall and continue to work for the winter is just it, it i can't say enough about how i think important it is obviously for these kids and the parents and the coaches yeah and i think you know our obviously as an athletic administrator mm -hmm. you know we, we want to offer programming you know yep. this this is what we do and, and the goal is to try and offer as many opportunities as we can safely yep. under the guidelines and, and the league did a lot of work and then here locally you know working with you you know ann calligan uh, my administrative yep. assistant uh, and marie bustler Bob Barksdale, our athletic trainer, and then really we, we really partnered, you know, NCM is always doing great, so much, yeah. but this year was obviously key being, able, I mean, we were the class of, we were the class of the league this year, you know, live streaming every great event time. in the stadium, sub varsity, varsity, you know, supplying accurate rosters, you, you know, and, yeah. and that was a real, uh, resource for us and NCM always you know is at the top of the of, of, of the ladder but I mean this fall it really showed you know when we really needed to you know have parents and and whether it's home or away yeah. have access to yeah. seeing the games so it really you know I was saying to you before the show the communication is is the key um, I think the kids you know, are happy to play. The parents are great. Honestly, the group that I think struggles the most with it is the coaches. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, the yeah. competitiveness of, <laughs> you know, of it being different, <laughs> yeah. not having a league championship. Yeah, yep, yep. You know, so I think they're the ones that, <laughs> you know, I think the kids are, are, are happy to be out there. You know, kids always say, you know, they always do kind of these um, studies and research. And w w when you ask a kid, why do they play sports? The number one answer they say is they play sports to have fun. Yeah. They don't that's the number one answer sure. from like age twelve to eighteen. Yeah. And so um, and the parents were definitely certainly uh, very respectful in Norwood of, of all the protocols we put in place yeah. and you know so that that was great and the coaches did a great job too I just oh, yeah. think it's with them doing it every year yep. it was so different that it's it's 
it takes a little bit of an adjustment. Oh, for sure. You know? Oh, for sure. But, um, you, you know, again, uh, I, I can't begin to thank you. I, it, it was a pleasure doing the games, and I know Brian Dunn really worked very hard behind the scenes to, to get that all together. But, um, you know, I want to thank, you know, you and your entire staff for, for all of the efforts that have gone on thus far to get these kids back out here on the fall. And things look promising for the winter, so we're right. kind of, you know, keeping our fingers crossed that we'll get them all started and, and, and then hopefully maybe this spring and, you know, as things go forward, we maybe come back to some semblance of, you know, that normalcy that right. we're looking for and, and we'll be back here um, with a great winter recap. Yeah. So, so again, thank you yeah, so thanks. very much for, thanks, for all that you've done this year and, and, and best wishes, you know, for, for the upcoming season, the upcoming holidays and all that. Thank you. All right. Thanks, thanks very thank much. You. Our athletic director here, John Longley, joining us in studio. Appreciate the time coming in and we'll be right back after these messages.